Hello Auggies Worldwide, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. And today we have a question from Wayne, Wayne Powell, KC3OKD. Now, he is one of the unfortunates who live in an apartment and have difficulty putting up an outdoor antenna. He has purchased an MFJ1622 indoor antenna for my apartment. That antenna has a clamp for the sill with basically a hamstick going out and then a counterpoise wire that runs back into the house. Now, your, I say your antenna mounts on a window so the radiating part can be outside. The counterpoise wire is snaked back into the house. Now, I will warn you that the counterpoise wire is hot and acts sort of like an antenna too. Okay. It, uh, moving the counterpoise will affect the tuning. That's one way to get it into tune, another way to get it out of tune. In an antenna like this, uh, the counterpoise can radiate as well. This subjects you and the people in the building who live near you to uh, radio electromagnetic fields. Now, most HF frequencies from 80 through 15 meters, this is not a big deal if you limit your power to 100 watts. If you're indoors like this, I think you're going to find that RFI hits you long before you get to 100 watts. You may have to run 50 or even 25. This is why a lot of people like um, FT8 because it really requires very little power uh, to be effective. Um, now, you will find that the antenna sees out and away from the building but doesn't radiate well through you, so it will be directional. Okay, if your building wall is this way, it'll radiate this way. Okay, now it's a compromise antenna, obviously, but it can work pretty well for you. It's a loaded whip. So from an electrical point of view, it's just as long as a full size quarter wave vertical. Okay, so um, this thing should work well for you. Now, if you get any complaints from your neighbors, um, work with them. Uh, maybe they can either move the equipment or move the wires around, or you can slip a ferrite bead around uh, the power cord just where it enters into the device uh, to try and get that stuff down. But these antennas do work. They do work. Okay, now the, the issue you will have uh, with these antennas is that they will... Um, tend to be somewhat narrow banded. That'll be particularly so on 40 meters, okay? Because they're highly loaded. Uh, they even work on 80 meters, actually. Okay, um, now note that I said from 80 through 15 meters, it's not a problem. At 10 meters, RF starts to become a problem at those uh, radi at, at, at those frequencies. Go to the ARRL RF radiation calculator, which is on their website, and run the numbers in there and see what you get. I think you'll find you're in pretty good shape in most cases for 100 watts, uh, although when you get up on 10 meters, you're going to start having to back down because at that point, um, the uh, wavelength is sort of comparable to the length of the human body. 10 meters is 5 meters is 15 feet. Okay, that's half wavelength. So a quarter wavelength would be about um, 7.5 feet. Now, I don't know very many people who are 7.5 feet. They're all on basketball teams. But still, it's on the order of where it can uh, affect a person who's long enough to be a quarter wave antenna on that. So there you have it. I hope that that works really well for you. Don't forget that, that moving that counterpoise around will affect the tuning. Okay. Um, and another way that you can do these, um, I think MFJ sells a product where you can put two ham sticks opposite each other. You could stick that out the window. Then you don't have to worry about a counterpoise. You will have to worry about tuning. Okay. So there you have it. And don't forget that we have a little uh, device for sale. It's a thumb drive. 
that has my 10 most popular ever videos. They make great presentations at ham fest or swap meets or club meetings, uh, especially in cases where you cannot access uh, the internet very well. Uh, these work for that. They're $29.95 and that covers shipping anywhere in the 50 United States. And uh, if you're overseas, contact me for shipping prices. Shipping prices to parts of Europe are amazingly cheap. Shipping prices to Canada are amazingly steep. Uh, not cheap, steep. <laughs> okay, so uh, also following immediately will be a list of our patrons, different ways you can contribute to the channel, and how to contact me. So, until we next meet, 73.